take this opportunity to welcome you to today's lesson. I hope you are going to enjoy a lot from this lesson. But before you start your enjoyment, I'd like you to press the red button there below the video, rate and subscribe. Just press on it. And then you can as well like the video clip. You can as well leave some comments behind. Okay, this is um, Mr. Ngeti's Form 4 Mathematics Assignment and uh, this Mathematics Assignment is meant for the Kenya Secondary Schools all the Kenya Secondary Schools within Kenya so can take these and uh, the subject teacher just like there I say that the subject teacher is going to take you through this assignment is Mr. Ngeti Kin Martin therefore feel more welcome and it is only meant for the Form 4 class so just like they normally say you see I, I really like this code that's why i normally put it across each and every time i give assignment to my students i normally put this across that when technology is normally implemented in the classroom so learning is normally brought to reality and students are normally empowered so that they can create their own learning future you see at times it becomes quite sweet and so good especially when you see students creating their own learning future as we all know that there's great or immense when it comes to technological advancement and therefore each and every student must try as much as possible so as to to do to to learn more concerning this technological advancement and all that because the world is nowadays so much competitive because what matters is what we bring to the company what you bring to the industry therefore you have to do all sorts of things it's not just a matter of going to university graduating coming out with a degree and then you there you you learn you want a job you want to work what is it that is new that you bring to the environment that's why I always like most of my students to be so much compliant with the ICT integrations when it comes to learning, when it comes to work and all the all kind of stuff you do with IT. I like that. So there's my picture over there. Okay, there's uh, my phone, mobile phone number there. You can contact me. And uh, you see I'm a maths, maths teacher, therefore I instill mathematical skills, which is a necessity especially when it comes to problem solving. We normally encounter several problems when it comes to life, problems in mathematics or all sorts of things like shopping things or, or maybe balancing of expenses and income or balancing some sorts of debts, okay, so like liabilities, the assets and all that, all those kind of stuffs are involved. They, they, they normally uh, require mathematical skills and that's why therefore I say that mathematical skills are very necessary especially when it comes to problem solving in our daily life. So the introduction B to this is that uh, uh, we've come to the end of the term one work and therefore there is need for us to have some holiday assignment. And there are so many changes that I've made when it comes to this in that for each and every question we are going to have an example that we're going to do first. I'm going to take you through the example and then later on I'll post the questions that you will be able to, to work through. So for each and every lesson that teachers normally uh, teaching classes they are normally objectives of course you see there's no teacher who can ju just uh, come into class and then start teaching without achieving any kind of objective unless the teacher was not prepared enough so there must be some objective that this teacher is supposed to accomplish at the end of the lesson and how will the teacher know whether he has accomplished this 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 objective by simply asking you questions and also even giving you some assignment and marking and in, in case the objectives are not accomplished then it means that the teacher must revisit the class so that the content can sync among the students now what are some of these objectives that i'm supposed to accomplish at the end of this lesson one is that by the end of this lesson the learner should be able to work out questions on integers and also on fractions which i know is just a, a revision for a candidate then calculate the relative and percentage errors of course this is also a revision then draw trigonometric graphs of course you should be able to do that and then also solve all questions within this assignment so let's start with example one so example one is always a very simple question uh, so this question only requires some knowledge on integers or division or, or, or let me just say most most of the the operations that are involved in integers so this question reads negative 12 divided by negative 3 multiplied by 4 
minus negative 50. That is on the numerator side. And then on the denominator side, we have negative 5 times 6 divided by 2 plus negative 5. Okay, so that's the example. Now let's go to, through these examples together. I hope you are there with me. Okay, so let's look at the numerator. So on the numerator side, I want us to, to know that we are going to use board mass here. Okay, now whenever you're using board mass, when I look at this operation here, uh, I can see division is coming first. So I'll have to take 12, negative 12 divided by negative 3. Of course, if you take negative 12 divided by negative 3, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 4. So that now I'll take 4 times 4, which will give me 16. And then there's this minus minus, which will give me now plus. So it will be 16 plus plus uh, 15. Of course, if you if you add that, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 16 plus 15, which is 31. So I'm done with the numerator side. Then I go to the denominator side. So in most cases, the reason why some students normally fail to get this question is because of the arrangement of the work. At times, it's good, especially when you arrange your work such that the person who's going to, to mark your work will not find it hard. And sometimes you find that some students are so careless that they just place disorganized work so that you can it can't flow. You can see how these of mine flows. Now I'm done with the numerator. Now I go to the denominator side. Now on the denominator side, I'll have negative 5 times 6 divided by 2 plus negative 5. So what am I going to start with? I'll start with the division, of course, because that's what comes first in board mass. Now when I divide 6 divided by 2, I'll get 3. Okay. So I'll have negative 5 times 3 plus negative 5, of course. So negative 5 times 3 will give me negative 15. Then add to negative 5. What am I going to have? Negative 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Then plus negative 5 will give me negative 20. So on the denominator side, I'm going to have negative 20. On the numerator side, I'm going to have 31. So that now when I bring this together, the numerator over the denominator, then I'll have 31 divided by negative 20. So this one, if you divide, you'll get negative 1.55, which is now the, uh, the answer. Are we together? I hope you are getting that. Get it right. Now let's go to the question. So on the side of the question, for question number one, you can have these. So it's there. Evaluate negative 8. Evaluate negative 8 divided by negative 2 times 3 minus negative 12. Everything divided by negative 2 times 8 divided by 2 plus negative 4. So that's the equation that you can write it down. Then we can now go to example 2. So in our example 2 we have this. I can read it. A rectangular card measures 5.3 centimeters by 2.5 centimeters. Find the absolute error in the area of the card and then part B the relative error in the area of the card. Now, for us to get the absolute error, remember, absolute error is always obtained from maximum possible area minus minimum possible area, then divide by 2. Then you'll be able to get the absolute error. This is this, this also short method where we can use to get the absolute error. But now, I always insist, insist, insist in this. Now, let's look at the maximum possible area. Now, for us to get maximum possible area, first of all, I'll look at the individual zero error of 5.3 so because it is in one decimal place i'll take 0 0.1 divided by 2 i'll get 0 0.05 so it can either be 5.3 plus or minus 0 0.05 or it can be 2.5 plus or minus 0 0.05 so of course if i want maximum i'll add so 2.55 times 5.3 uh, uh, times 5.35 which will give me 13.6425 then for the minimum possible area i'll have I'll subtract 5.3 minus 0 0.05, 2.5 minus 0 0.05. So this one will give me 2.45 times 5.25, which is 12.8625. Okay. So I have the minimum possible area and I have the maximum possible area. So I can also look for the working area. So the working area is just the actual area, which you just simply multiply because it's length times width. So 2.5 times 5.3, which gives me 13.25. Okay, I hope we are together there, up to there. Now let's look at the absolute error. The absolute error is obtained by getting 
maximum possible area minus minimum possible area then divide by 2. Now if I work out this I'll get 0 0.39 of course then I can go ahead and get the relative error by taking the absolute error which is 0 0.39 divided by the actual area which is 13.25 so this one will give me 0 0.02943 so in case you are asked to calculate the percentage error what will I do you take the relative error then multiply by 100 now if you multiply this by 100 you get 2.943 percent so that is now the percentage error now assignment to this question The assignment that I would like to give you based on that question 2 reads Question 2 The base and the perpendicular height of a triangle measures measured to the nearest centimeters are 6 centimeters and 4 centimeters. Find the absolute error in calculating the area of the triangle. Okay. Part B The percentage error in the area giving the answer to one decimal place. So you can write that one down. So let's look at example 3. So in example 3 we have trigonometric uh, graph. So on the same axis draw a wave function of y is equal to sin x and for negative pi less or equal to x which is less or equal to 7 over 2 pi. So what you should know here is that Whenever we talk of pi, pi means 180 degrees. So if you have 2 pi, we talk of um, 360 degrees. So like for example, this, the range here in terms of degrees is uh, from negative 180 degrees to all away to 7 over 2 times 180, which will give you the number of the degrees. Now, so how do we tackle this so note that y is equal to 2 sine x is the same as twice the, the, the trigonometric, trigonometric graph of 2x meaning that it has got an amplitude of 2 so this indicates that the y values for the key point will have twice the magnitude of those on the graph of y is equal to sin x so it means that if you draw a graph of y is equal to sin x and y is equal to 2 sin x it means that it's going to multiply the amplitude of y is equal to sin x by 2 so to get the values of y simply substitute the values of x in the equation so that you can get y is equal to 2 sin x as follows so when you substitute the values here we have negative pi negative half pi zero and so on you'll be able to get this range of values here so we'll have two sine of negative 180 here degrees you'll get zero two sine of negative half of 180 which is negative 90 you'll get negative two so you can just be converting them into degrees and then you get the values of y until the table is filled up to the end. So we'll have 0, negative 2, 0, 2, 0, negative 2, 0, 2, 0, negative 2, and so on. Now if we draw the graph, so we can plot the graph of y against x, so that on the x-axis we we'll have, uh, we'll have uh, the ones on, in radians, and then we we'll have the numbers over there so you'll find that if you compare the two curves that is for y is equal to sin x it is a bit lower in terms of magnitude as compared to the one with two sin x because it has doubled it has doubled the y is equal to sin x and you can see that okay it's doubling doubling all through across okay so the amplitude is doubled so there we are Then therefore the assignment for this that I want you to do is uh, this. Complete the table below, leaving all your answer, your, your values correct to two decimal places for the function y is equal to cos x and y is equal to 2 cos x plus 30. So you can go ahead and uh, fill in this table. So once you have filled it, then you can go ahead and draw the graph. 
Now once you've drawn the graph, so for the function y is equal to 2 cos x plus 30, state the period so you can go ahead and set the period and also the face angle. Now when you talk of the period, you talk of 360 divided by the coefficient of x. Of course here the coefficient of x is going to be 1. So 360 divided by 1, you'll be able to get the answer. Then the face angle is the angle that has been added here. Of course you can see the angle which has been added inside here. So that's what we talk. We mean by face angle. Then once you've calculated that one, then on the same axis, draw the waves of the function y is equal to cos x and y is equal to 2 cos of this. So you are going to have two waves. Okay. So two waves. So use the scale of 1 centimeter to represent 30 degrees on the horizontal and 2 centimeter to represent 1 unit vertically. So here you have already been given the scale. So you can go ahead and, and draw the graph. So let's look at question 4. So we'll start with example 4. So in our example 4 we have if root of 14 divided by root of 7 minus root of 2 minus root of 14 divided by root of 7 plus root of 2 in the form of a root of 7 plus b root of 2. So I want us to find the values of a and b where a and b are rational numbers. Now let's work out this. So the solution, so we'll start by getting the LCM. The LCM of root of 7 minus root of 2 and root of 7 plus root of 2 are as follows. So root of 7 minus root of 2 into root of 7 plus root of 2. So we'll write it down here. Then we say that root of 7 minus root of 2 goes here how many times? Root of 7 plus root of 2. So multiply that by the root of 14, we'll get this. Then the same time we can also do for the second bit. Uh, root of 7 plus root of 2 goes here, root of 7 minus root of 2. So multiply by root of 14, so you'll get this. Okay. Now if you multiply this, root of 14 times root of 7, I'll get root of 98. Root of 14 times root of 2, I'll get root of 28. Okay. The root of 14 times root of 7, I'll get root of 98. Okay. Minus root of 14 times root of 2, I'll get root of, root of 28. But then this one, on the denominator working it's very easy because it's always similar look at root of 7 and root of 7 they're the same minus and and uh, plus are the ones which are different but root of 2 and root of 2 are, are still similar so you simply speak root of 7 times root 7 then you have 7 the root of 2 times root of 2 you have 2 so that this one just 7 minus 2 which gives me 5 now if i work i work out what is on the uh, numerator side i'll have 7 root 2 plus 2 root 7 minus 7 root 2 plus 2 root 7. Of course, if you subtract these two, we'll go, then we'll have 4 root of 7. So 4 root of 7, okay, over 5. So that now my a now becomes 4 over 5 and b becomes 0. So you'll see the value of a is 4 over 5 and the value of b is 0. So the assignment to this question here is as follow, and I can take you through this assignment. Simplify as far as possible using uh, leaving your answer in the form of a sad. So the question is one over root of fourteen minus two root three minus one over root fourteen plus two root three. So they just the same. They're just similar with the other one. Very simple question. Just try to work it out. You'll be able to do it. So let's look at example 5. So example 5 reads log of x plus 1 to base 5 plus log of x minus 3 to base 5 which is equal to 1. So I want us to get the value of x. Now for us to get the value of x, what are you going to do? So we know that log of x plus 1 to base 5 plus log of x minus 3 to base 5 is equal to 1. We can have, instead of having 1 here, we can have this. We can have uh, log log of 5 to base 5. 
course, you know that log of 5 to base 5 is the same as 1. Okay. Now, once we have this, then we know that x uh, log of x plus 1 to base 5 plus log of x minus 3 to base 5. Addition of logs is the same as multiplication. So it means that this is the same as log of x. So this is x minus, no, x plus, I mean, just rub this, x plus 1 into x minus 3. All this in bracket. to base 5 will be equal to log of 5 to base 5. So that now if I drop the logs, if I drop these logs, I'll now have x plus 1 into bracket x minus 3 should give me 5. So that's, that's why I've moved from all these to this step. So that now, if you work out this, it will be x squared minus 2x minus 3 minus 5. You bring this 5 the other side. So this one gives me a quadratic equation of x squared minus 2x minus 8. So I can go ahead and look for two numbers, which if, we, if I multiply, I get negative 8. If I add, I get negative 2. Okay, so if you factorize that, you'll get x minus 4 in bracket x plus 2. So that the value of x becomes 4 and the value of x becomes negative 2. So we can go through assignment to this, which you can work out. Solve the equation, log into x plus 24 minus 2, log 3 is equal to log to bracket 9 minus 2x. So what you should note is that when the base is not given, the base is always steps. Don't worry about that. So I can rub my board. Then can now continue. So let's look at example six. Example six is a simple one. It reads that an arc of a circle subtends an angle of sixty de degrees at the center of a circle. Find the length of the arc if the radius of the circle is forty-two. So we are going to take pi to be twenty-two over seven. So that's a simple one. Of course, we know that uh, the length L of an arc is given by theta over 360 times 2 pi r. So our theta there is 60, our r is 42. So you simply substitute so that to get L is equal to 60 over 360 times 2 over 22 over 7 times 42, which will give us 44 centimeters. Therefore, through this example, you should be able to work out this equation. So we can write down our question. Question number 7. An arc of a circle subtends an angle of 80 degrees at the center of a circle. Find the length of the arc if the radius of the circle is 84 centimeters. Take pi to be 22 over 7. So you can go ahead and work out this. Very simple. Very simple. Just the same same way we did the other one. So there we go. We have example. The next example. So in the next example, we have a variable y is partly constant and partly varies as x. If x is equal to 2 when y is equal to 7, and x is equal to 4 when y is equal to 11, find the equation connecting the y and the x. That is the equation of the relation. So from this question here, the required equation is y is equal to kx plus c. Okay, why? Because this y is partly constant, which is c and partly varies as x. So therefore, we are going to have a constant before that x. So where k and x 
and c are constants so now substituting x to be 2 and y to be 7 and x to be 4 when y is 11 in the equation we gives we this one will give us if you substitute the two will give us these two equations that is 7 is equal to 2k plus c 11 is equal to 4k plus c so that's the second equation now subtract equation 1 from equation 2 we'll have 4 is equal to 2k therefore k will give us 2 then substitute k is equal to 2 in the equation so we'll have c to be equal to 3 so therefore the equation of the relation will now be y is equal to 2x plus plus 3 so that gives us the equation of the relation which is y is equal to 2x plus plus 3 so the assignment that I wanted to work out is this for question 7. A quantity P is partly constant and partly varies inversely as the quantity Q given that P is equal to 10 when Q is equal to 1.5 and P is equal to 20 when Q is equal to 1.25. Find the value of P when Q is equal to 0 0.5. As simple as that. Very simple. Let's look at example 8. Example 8 reads, so this is 8, the cost of two skirts and three blouses is 600 shillings. If the cost of one skirt and two blouses of the same quality is 350, find the cost of each item. So this is a very simple one. So I'll just go to the solution and in my solution I'll say, let the cost of one skirt be x shillings and that of one blouse to be y shillings. So that the cost of two skirts and the three blouses will now be 2x plus 3y shillings, of course. Then the cost of the skirt and two, two blouses will now be x plus 2y shillings. So that now I can substitute this 2x plus 3y is equal to 600, which is the first one. And then the second one will be x plus 2y is equal to 350, of course. So I have equation 1 and equation 2, which I can solve simultaneously. Now, how I'm going to solve these ones simultaneously? By multiplying equation 2 by 2, I'll get equation 3. So the reason why I'm, I'm multiplying is so that I can make 2x and 2x to be the same. And therefore, 4y can be subtracted from, or I can subtract 3y from 4y. So if I subtract this, I'll have y is equal to 700 minus 600, which is 100. So it means that y is equal to 100. Now, if y is equal to 100, I can go ahead and substitute this from equation 2 so that from x plus 2y is equal to 350. And I know that y is 100. Come and put it where there is y. So that I'll have 2 times 100 which will give me 200. Now if I have 200 here, I'll bring it the other side. So that now my x will now be 350 minus 200 which will give me 150. So therefore, I can therefore say that the cost of one skirt is 150 shillings and that of the blouse is 100 shillings. Which is very true which is very easy. So, because we've done this, we can now go to the assignment. So the assignment to the, this question 8 is that two pair of trousers, so this is question 8, you can change that, this is question 8. Two pair of trousers and three shirts costs a total of 390 shillings. Find such pairs of trousers and Two skirts of course a total of 810 shillings so find the price of a pair of trousers and a pair of shirt so the cost or the price of a pair of trousers and a shirt so that's very easy and you can go ahead and work out that so let's look at example 9 there we go during a month, the exchange rate in a bank was follows. So it's the bank that does the buying and the selling because it's the one that wants to make profit, so not us. So it's the bank that does the business. Now, once you've known that, then you can take this example. A tourist left Kenya to the United States with one million on the airport. He exchanged all the money to dollars and spent $190 on an air ticket. Now, when in USA he spent $4,500 for the upkeep and proceeded to Europe, while in Europe, he spent a total of 2,000 euros. So how many euros did he remain with? So that's a very simple question. So you can go directly to the solutions and then see how it's supposed to be done. So I'll say that a thousand uh, million shillings into dollars. So because I want to convert it into, into dollars, I'll go the bank, 
will sell to me at 91.80 so that now I'll divide uh, 1 million by 91.80 so as to get 10,893.25 okay so this one will be the dollars but now how much dollar was spent so we have 190 and 4500 which if you add then you subtract from 10893.25 you'll get 6203.25 dollars okay then these dollars you later on change them into euros because it went now to europe so i'll go with my uh, dollars so that now the bank will buy from me so the bank buys one dollar at 91.65 and i have how many dollars 6203.25 so i'll multiply with 91.65 so as to get 568,278.86 so this the amount that was used now this one was again exchanged into euros because this person wants to go and spend this amount a certain amount in euro so when he goes to the bank the bank will sell to him euros Okay, so the bank sells euros at 103.93 so I'll take 568,527.86 divided by 103.93 so that I'll get 5,470.30 so that's the amount so if you subtract uh, 2,000 here I'll get 3,470.30 as the euros that this person is going to remain with So the assignment for question 9. So the assignment reads, a Kenya bank buys and sells foreign currencies as shown below. So we have the buying in Kenyan shillings and then the sellings in Kenyan shillings. So on the buying we have one Hong Kong dollars which cost 9.74 and then it's being sold at 9.77. Then we have one South African rand which is being bought at 12.03 then being sold at 12.11. So we have a tourist who arrived in Kenya with 105,000 Hong Kong dollars and changed the whole amount to Kenyan shillings. So while in Kenya he spent a total of 103,897 and then changed the balance to South African rand before leaving for South Africa. So calculate the amount in South African rand that she received. So that's a very simple question because we've already done the first example then you can be able to do this. Very very simple. Now let's look at example 10. So example 10 talks about probability, which is a very simple topic because I normally like this. Very simple. Now we have the probability that Omori goes to Nakuru is a quarter. This is an example of a question from the KLB textbook. So the probability of Omori going to Nakuru is a quarter. If he goes to Nakuru, the probability that he will see Flamingo is a half. Now if he does not go to Nakuru, then the probability that he will see Flamingo is a third. Find the probability that Omori will go to Nakuru and see Flamingo. Omwiri will not go to Nakuru yet, will see a flamingo. Omwiri will see a flamingo. So we can come up with a tree diagram for this under the solution. So we'll have the probability that Omwiri goes to Nakuru and the probability that Omwiri is not going to Nakuru. And then after that, Omwiri is seeing a flamingo when he goes to Nakuru. Omwiri not seeing a flamingo when he goes to Nakuru. Omwiri not going to Nakuru but sees a flamingo maybe somewhere. Um, we're not going to Nakuru and maybe fails to see a flamingo. So you can see here we have a, qu a quarter, three quarter, because already we've been given Omweri um, goes to Nakuru is a quarter, so it means not going is three of quarter. Then we have Omweri um, seeing a flamingo is a half, so not seeing will be also be a half. And then if he does not go to Nakuru, then the, prob the probability that he sees a flamingo is a third. So if he does not see, it now becomes two thirds. So it's as simple as that. Now, once you've made a tree diagram like this, it becomes even much easier for you to get this question. So the first part, probably that he goes to Nakuru and see a flamingo. So that one will be NF, which will be a quarter times half, which is one over eight. He does not go to Nakuru and yet see a flamingo. Not going to Nakuru and F. So this one will be three over four times a third, which is still a quarter. And then he sees a flamingo. So for him to see a flamingo, it's either he went to Nakuru and see a flamingo, or he did not go to Nakuru but see a flamingo, which will be one over eight, which we have got, plus a quarter that we have got, we get three over eight. And that's as simple as that. Then the assignment to this question 
is as shown you can write it down so maybe i can read it for you the last question which is question number 10 the probability of three darts players that is akinyi kamau and juma hitting the ball of eyes are 0 0.2 0 0.3 1.5 respectively so the first question here you are supposed to draw a, a probability tree diagram to show the possible outcomes okay then part b find the probability that all hits the bull's eye okay second one only one of them hits the bull's eye then the lastly the third one at most one miss the bull's eye so that's the question you can put it down So once you're done with putting down the question, then uh, those are the question, the assignment that you're supposed to do. There are only 10 questions. Now we have come to the end. Okay, learners, I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, the lesson and uh, most of the concept that were being explained.